How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather SpongeBob 1000 and in this video, of course, we're going to focus on Invest 94L, which likely will become Tropical Storm Tammy and potentially Hurricane Tammy in the more long term future. And taking a look at the latest run of the Canadian model, we do see that it could become concerning for the Caribbean. This does make landfall somewhere around the Leeward Islands by the October 20th time frame um, with a millibar pressure hovering around 981 millibars, which would be concerning. Considered potentially up to category two status, especially if the wind field of the storm system remains small, that will definitely enhance the wind speed for this to most likely be considered a category two at landfall, which could um, be very concerning for the Leeward Islands. And moving forward, we do see this does brush the island of Puerto Rico. However, since we're around seven days out, we could easily see the uh, shift in the forecast where the um, trajectory could move a little bit further westward to bring a landfall over Puerto Rico but at the same time we could also see potentially a more um uh, definitely a more favorable track which would avoid the caribbean islands and move just a little bit to the east so it's still a little bit uncertain what trajectory we're gonna see this far out the computer models have been all over the place regarding the trajectory of this storm system the gfs model been persistent on taking this offshore the european model is somewhere in the middle between the canadian and the gfs model but the european model still brings impacts to lesser Antilles and and all of them do believe that this storm system will eventually become a hurricane so even at the even in the best case scenario you likely will receive rough surf right around the lesser Antilles as well as the Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic area and continuing to move forward this does eventually move northward the trajectory will all depend on this ridge just to the north of it let's take a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly of course the stronger this ridge is and the further westward it moves the more likely we're going to see this storm move further westward along with this ridge the canadian model expects this trough that's expected to move into the eastern half of the united states by next week to be strong enough to eventually dip down and shift the wind direction from a west from a easterly direction to more of a southerly direction to eventually steer this northward and eventually out to sea and the timing of when this trough moves in to the eastern half of the united states will be key as well as how powerful it'll be because if it's a little weaker then we're more likely to see a stronger ridge and that will steer the storm further westward which would be more of a concern for the Caribbean islands a little bit further westward, such as um, Hispaniola, Jamaica, Cuba, the Cayman Islands, and potentially as far west as the Bahamas, you could potentially see impacts if we were to see the ridge become a little bit stronger. Let's take a look at what the European model is stating. And like I just said, the European model is somewhere in between. It nearly takes a landfall right around the Lesser Antilles, but expects this trough to dip down um, quick enough um, right around the Saturday, October 21st time frame to eventually steer this to the north. So we're definitely going to keep an eye on all the main um, most reliable computer models over the next several days regarding its trajectory and to really pay attention to how the track will shift over the next few days. Just pay attention to this trough that's going to move through the um, west coast um, in a couple of days. And depending on how strong it is and how strong the southerly winds will be associated with this jet stream dip, that will determine the trajectory of this trough and ultimately the trajectory of this tropical cyclone. So definitely pay close attention to this trough as it moves through the United States. Now, in terms of the strength forecast, so it seems like I said, it seems like the computer models are very lenient on, uh, of course, it's inevitable that it's going to develop into a tropical storm at this point. Taking a quick look at the five day graphical tropical weather outlook, we do see the National Hurricane Center is now giving this a 90% chance of developing over the next seven days. So at this point, you should expect a tropical storm. And we do see with the trajectory of the National Hurricane Center, it looks like it wants to take it straight towards the Leeward and Windward Islands. It's so uncertain if that's going to happen, but just pay attention to the ridging just to the north of it. So when it comes to the intensity forecast of Tropical Storm Tammy, we do see over the next several days, it will have a decent amount of convection surrounding it, which should 
allow for the air pressure to drop along surface and the wind speed to increase gradually however it's going to deal with a little bit of wind shear especially once it moves closer to the caribbean which not only will make conditions a little bit more hostile in the upper levels of the atmosphere because with stronger wind shear the energy isn't as focused because we have stronger upper level winds that's the tearing a lot of the air molecules away from the center of circulation which means that there's less convergence less heat for the storm to work with around center of circulation and the pressure becomes a little bit higher since the air molecules aren't converging as fast thanks to a stronger amount of wind shear and we're seeing that here where the european model doesn't necessarily want to strengthen it very much as it approaches the caribbean it does eventually strengthen but not very fast thanks to a strong wind shear but not but it's not just a strong wind shear like i said it's also um what this strong wind shear will also do is bring a higher amount of dry air on the western half which is the reason why by thursday october 29th time frame the storm does become pretty lopsided when it comes to the amount of moisture um surrounding this storm system where most of the moisture is located on the eastern half while the western half is primarily dry and that isn't a very efficient way for intensification for tropical cyclones because they need a high amount of convection on all um on all sides of this of the storm system where the air where the air pressure will be low on all areas rather than in just one area so that will keep the storm um at bay from really rapidly intensifying however the european model ex doesn't expect the wind shear to be strong enough or the stable air on the western side to be um abundant enough for this to let's say potentially weaken or fizzle out the european model still expects a hurricane to come uncomfortably close to a lesser antithes let me show you guys the upper level winds um now of course how strong the upper level winds could still change over the next few days um forecasting the amount of wind shear is definitely a little bit difficult especially even if we're approaching the more short-term future so of course we could see this wind shear become stronger we do see there's going to be an upper level low located right over the windward and leeward islands by the october 19 time frame that'll bring a moderate amount of wind shear right over this storm system which will allow the stable air to entrain the western side and just create more hostile conditions for um for the convergence to be as high surrounding in the center of circulation so we do see that it does strengthen but not very rapidly and hopefully that remains and hope and hopefully the wind shear actually does become stronger than what's initially anticipated however it seems like the at this point the most likely scenario is of course we're gonna see a chuckle storm out of this i think there's no debate regarding that but i think most likely we will see a hurricane out of this um i'll say a category one is likely potentially up to category two status category three category four that's still a, a little bit too much up in the air to really say with certainty that's gonna happen i'll place my bets that it won't reach that intensity mainly due to the fact that just a chuckle cyclone developing in the main development region during the month of october is already pretty difficult thanks to the sh um a strong amount of wind shear that typically exists during the month of october um so historically um based on on historical standards it's a bit of a reach for this reach major hurricane status but again you never know but i at least at the very least do expect a hurricane um to be the most likely scenario at this point and what gives me a little bit more confidence regarding the intensity forecast of tropical storm tammy is the fact that the cmc as well as the gfs model are in pretty good agreement regarding the amount of wind shear that this storm system will deal with we see that the canadian model is very similar to the european model does expect an upper level low to exist right over the leeward islands at exactly the same time period october 19th where we do see a moderate amount of wind shear over the center of circulation and however it still isn't enough to really weaken this storm much and the upper level winds in the Canadian models case actually do um, help the ventilation of this storm release more outflow which means that a lot more air could rise at a more rapid pace with the outflow being a lot stronger in the upper levels a push 
those air molecules. It's equivalent to, let's say, pushing water out of a bucket. It allows, of course, more water to fill the bucket from the bottom. And that's exactly what's go what's happening right here with the stronger upper level winds enhancing the outflow for the wind speed to increase. And we do see this does come close to the um, Puerto Rico area. And it really all depends on this ridge and this trough. So to summarize, a tropical storm is pretty much guaranteed at this point. We'll most likely see a hurricane, especially once this approach um, comes close to the Caribbean. However, the big question remains where it'll go. And that's still a little bit too uncertain to say. Um, it, we could see this move a little, the trajectory move a little bit further westward, or maybe just move out to sea and not impact the Caribbean. Just definitely stay tuned for more updates. Pay close attention to how the computer models um, shift their forecast forecast over the next several runs and see if there be and um, determine if we're going to see a trend from the computer models um, over the next several runs where we potentially see one of the computer models follow the other because once we see one of the uh, main computer models begin to um, follow the other when it comes to the trajectory then more likely than not we're going to have a higher confidence in that um, trajectory forecast so just stay tuned as we'll probably get a higher amount of certainty um, over the next 48 to 72 hours and here's a current water vapor imagery for um, what will likely become Tropical Storm Tammy. We do see the convective activity is beginning to increase. It's likely to develop within the next two days, a 70% chance the National Hurricane Center is giving. And we're beginning to see this storm really um, begin to develop a well-defined center of circulation with this enhanced amount of convective activity. And expect that to increase over the next few hours as it seems like there really isn't enough dry air to prevent the convective activity or the lift um, from occurring um, surrounding the center of circulation. So do expect Tropical Storm Tammy within the next 48 hours. And now here are what the ensemble members are stating for the two most reliable computer models, GFS and the European model. And as you can see with the European model, it's pretty much in line with what the primary European model is stating. We do have several ensemble member runs wanting to take a landfall right over the Leeward Islands. And we do have two of them wanting to take a landfall over Puerto Rico. However, definitely don't make your forecast check off of these ensemble member runs because we have seen ensemble members shift their forecast quite a bit. Um, especially when it's a storm that's around five to seven days out from potentially approaching um, land. So definitely expect shifts over the next several days. Hopefully it moves a little bit further eastward, like what the GFS model is currently for, or the ensemble members are currently forecasting. So with a big, um, with a pretty big disparity in the trajectory like this, it's still too far out to narrow down the forecast. But I'll certainly keep you guys updated if we begin to see a trend between at least one of the two computer models if they begin to follow the other, because I will definitely. Um, that would definitely give us a better indication that the certainty w um, is rising regarding the trajectory. So let's say the Canadian model is correct, which hopefully it isn't. We definitely don't want to see a hurricane make landfall over the Leeward Islands or potentially impact Puerto Rico or even areas further westward. But if the Canadian model were to be the correct scenario, this is the amount of rainfall you should expect right over the Leeward Islands, right? Um, anywhere in excess of five to eight inches, which is certainly enough to cause major river flooding as well as flash flooding, um, especially in the higher elevations. So the Leeward Islands as well as the British and um, US Virgin Islands and even areas as far west as Puerto Rico, pretty much the entirety of the Caribbean. I won't rule out the Dominican Republic or Haiti either from getting impacted. You need to definitely be aware of this because it seems, um, it seems like the computer models at the very least want to take a hurricane relatively close to you guys to where you definitely need to keep tabs on this. In the European models forecast, it does ring the heaviest rain um, primarily out to sea, which is certainly good news. However, 
um, portions of the Leeward Islands would experience three to five inches of rain in this scenario, especially on the eastern edge. So even if the European model is correct, you could be impacted by flooding, potentially gustier winds um, in excess of Chogo storm force winds, and of course, rough surf. And I wouldn't rule out coastal flooding, even if the eye doesn't necessarily move straight over the Leeward Islands or Puerto Rico. But that's it for now guys, I thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content and make sure to like if you do enjoy this video and I hope you guys have a great day.